Since the beginning of Minecraft, duplicating has been in every single update. And in 1.20, it's exactly the same. Sand dupers, rail dupers, carpet dupers, TNT dupers, and methods to duplicate whatever you want are all possible. And today, I'm going to build every single one of them in my hardcore world. Some of these are used by everyone, and some of these are viewed as cheating. So please, don't accuse me of cheating in the comments, because for most of these machines, I'll just end up destroying the items using a cactus. Now, the first of the dupers that we're going to be making is the TNT duper. And as the video progresses, the dupers are going to get more and more OP and more and more useful. As for the TNT duper, this is used by loads of players, including myself, for various farms and world eaters. The glitch to do this has been in the game for years, and for whatever reason, Mojang have chosen not to patch it. And we're going to use this to solve one of my biggest problems. I, I just never have enough wood. I do have this manual tree farm which requires mining with an axe, but it's quite slow and inefficient. So we're going to build a massive tree farm that will get me loads and loads of wood and will also include a TNT duper. It doesn't require that many items, so I'm going to get busy gathering everything that I need. And that is every single item that I'm going to need. And I also discovered a feature on YouTube, ladies and gentlemen, that I never knew existed. You know that button underneath this video that begins with S? I, I can't say it, but I just want you to have a look at it right now. Because when I say the word subscribe, it should go rainbow, which I did not know was a thing. And then if you're new and actually press the subscribe button, a load more rainbow sparkles come out, which, which I never knew. It looks very, very cool. And if you're new here, you should wait, wait for the sparkles. You should subscribe. Yeah, I'm having way too much fun with that new feature. Anyway, this is where we're going to build the tree farm with the TNT duper. And this is a type of TNT duper that I've never built before. In fact, I never knew the design for it existed. So it's pretty cool. And it's very, very simple, which in my opinion makes it even better. That is enough of an area successfully flattened. And now I can actually begin building this. Water is going to be quite an important thing, but we're in a bit of a snowy area. So to make sure that it doesn't freeze, I'm going to add some signs. Now we're going to start using scaffolding to add some obsidian and some dirt. Next, I'm going to dig the collection system. It is very, very simple indeed. This water will push the items along here. And then in this position, we're just going to dig up a little bit so we can swim up. And then we're going to extend this up to be quite a bit more. And by quite a bit more, I mean this tall. Yeah, not, not, not too crazy, is it? So let's go and add some kelp all the way up. And this bit is complete. Did you know this? You can actually place carpet on top of water. How cool is that? Now I'm going to place a load of scaffolding. And I could climb to the top but I'm going to fly and get some sleep while I'm up there. And up here, we're going to build the system that connects to the TNT duper. So this piston is going to nudge the falling TNT to the side if it's needed. It depends on the type of tree we're growing. And now we go up a little bit more. And this is where the TNT duper is going to be built. So I'll get down the TNT, add a piston facing into it. And then we're going to have some iron blocks around because we need to hold in some water. Here comes the snow, but that's not going to stop me. I'm going to add this bit of redstone to complete the TNT duper. It is very, very simple, isn't it? Told you I wasn't joking. And now I need to build a collection system to gather up all the wood. These signs and the trapdoor are going to hold the water in place. I break that. Look at it, it's perfect. Now to add a bit more redstone. Once I place this redstone dust, you'll see that the TNT duper is working. It is raining down on the obsidian. And to turn the machine off, I'm just going to flick this lever. And technically, this farm will work fine now. It'll, it'll get me all the wood that I need. So to test out the farm, I've got my saplings. I've got a bunch of bone meal. And I can just stand here whilst I keep using the farm. This farm is fairly efficient. And from those six stacks of bone meal, I've got a grand total of five and a half stacks of wood. <laughs> Not bad. But I don't want to have to manually replenish my bone meal. No, we're going to make a machine so it automatically does that. It just requires a very small amount of redstone items, which can be added right here. Basically, this dropper will keep dispensing items, such as this bone meal, and then the pressure plate will stop it dispensing so that if there's items here, it doesn't cause an overflow, and I can also turn the machine off with that lever. These three double chests are all getting filled to the brim with bone meal, and I shall now switch the farm on. I'm running for an hour to see just how much wood I end up with. Plenty of time has passed, and 
as you can see, I've got loads and loads and loads of stuff in these chests. I had to keep throwing away all the apples and the saplings to make space. So I'm going to load up my inventory and then load up these shulker boxes. Next, I'm going to once again gather up a load of building blocks because I'm also going to want to build one that can farm these nether trees. I now have everything right here and I can get busy building tree farm number... What on earth is that goat doing? It's actually lost its mind. I have never seen this before. Why? Why is it doing that? <laughs> it is It is completely broken. There you go. You're, you're back to normal now. All right. You, you kind of know what you're doing, but you're, you're really not having a good day. Anyway, I'll just get focused on building this tree farm. And that is that done. And I'd next like to add an auto sorting system to both of these storages. That is the first one done. And the second one is also finished. I just need to load it up with all the correct items. I've just got to load it up with bone meal. And then I need a way to replace the fungus that I'll plant. A similar way to the bone meal. But as you can see, I've only got two of each. So right here, I'm going to build a nice little square with five pistons on each side. Blocks on top with some redstone. A dispenser in the middle, which is going to have bone meal in it like that. And then whatever I want to get, I just put that on top. So at the moment, I'm going to get some crimson fungi. I can hook up the redstone and then the farm is done. You can see if I flick this, look at that. They're already coming in so, so fast. Then I can just go ahead, grab all of them and turn all these roots that I'm not going to use into bone meal with the composter. No efficiency is lost. And right next to it, I'm going to build one for the warped variant as well. And if I actually connected this to the dispenser, it, it would work. I also need to build another one of these right here that is instead going to dispense fungus to me. And with that, I can now switch on the farm and fully test it out. More than enough time has passed. So let's go over here and switch off the machine. And the wood stocks are now looking pretty good. And next on the list, I'm going to build something that I said I'd never do. I'm going to build a sand farm. Yes, a farm that will duplicate sand, gravel, and concrete powder. Why am I doing this? Well, first of all, I get loads and loads of comments of people telling me to build one. And finally, Mojang have known about the bug for ages, and they still haven't patched it. Kind of like was the case for the TNT duper. I've now successfully collected up all the items that I'm going to need. And now I can head to the end to start the building process. And you're also about to see why I didn't repair this part of my end hub because uh, we're going to be using some TNT. Put all of my resources into this chest and then I'll grab the necessary items to break bedrock. Next, I'm going to build the setup right here. And I've also used obsidian to protect as much of this building as possible. That is the first bit of bedrock broken. Thankfully, none of these blocks got destroyed. And so now I can work on the other bits. There we go. All five have been done. And now I've just got to spend a bit of time mining up 100 pieces of obsidian. And that is the last of them gone. And I'm next going to place blocks over the top of the end portal so that I don't accidentally walk through and then add some pistons along here. Next, I'll grab every single item for the build so that I can begin adding everything in. A big part of this build is going to be observers looking at scaffolding. You can see all of them extend. And you can see even more why I wasn't trying to fix everything because, okay, well, I don't know what just happened there. I messed up the scaffolding and didn't place one where they were supposed to be, but now it uh, it should be fine. So this is how the redstone's going to look. I'm now going to repeat the same thing, kind of, across here for more timings. So again, a load of scaffolding going along with more observers and pistons right here. And it is done. We can remove the dirt. Then I can add some walls like so. And then if I add some sand... This is the block that's going to get juked, but I, I could do this with concrete powder. I could do it with whatever I want, really. Gravel's another one that works. This doesn't work with things like dragon eggs and anvils or suspicious sand for that matter either. We can test it all out by flicking this lever and see it in action. So yeah, look at that. And it's pushing them through. Fantastic. Okay, we don't want to run it for too long. Instead, let's head through and check it out on the other side. So it looks like this is the world spawn because this is where all of the sand dropped. I did kind of stupidly leave my compass in the end. So just give me one moment to head back to the end and grab the items that are left behind. Yep, according to the compass, this is definitely the spot. This is the space that it's going to take up. I could build it really high in the sky so it's out of the way. The TNT is going to come here. I don't think it should destroy anything. Probably my famous last words. So let's place down some mud, which will break any gravity block that falls onto it. And then I can build a platform. More mud also needs to be here, as well as three composters. And then I can build a wall around the edge to hold in the water. Pistons are going to be what push the blocks along. Now to add some redstone to connect to the pistons. And you'll be able to see now how placing a block 
makes all the pistons extend because the wall updates the observer. I'm now building the trusty TNT duper. Yep, all of these seem to have TNT dupers, don't they? Now I've just got to attach this to the redstone clock that I made right here. And now I need water. Lots of water to waterlog every single leaf block. I'm now ready to add the water that will flow all of the items to the middle. We're just going to have ice and I'm adding a slab so that they don't freeze over. And now I'm building the collection system, which does require quite a few hoppers. I'll probably make an auto sorter to go with it as well. Don't ask where these beds are from. Only the OGs will remember this episode. You know, I'll properly sort that in a second. Let's test this out. So from the end, I can flick this lever to send the sand through, and then the game will send a copy of the gravity block through the portal, and it will pop out here, getting destroyed thanks to gravity. It gets me about 45,000 sand per hour, and if I change this to be concrete powder instead, it turns it into concrete that can then be blown up and collected up by the hoppers. So yeah, that's the general gist of how it all works. It's very, very cool indeed. It's actually another of Ian XO4's designs. They're very, very cool what he does. As you can see, we've got loads of stuff coming through. But if I want to actually auto-sort all the items that come through, I'm going to need to improve the design. And it's actually going to work in a very similar way to the tree farm sorting systems, except this time, I'm going to attach a shulker box loader as well. So I'll get busy and get to work collecting up all of the items. Every single needed item is right here. And I'm actually going to build this entire storage underground just because it'll, it'll look a bit better if it's hidden. And I thought it could also be a great opportunity to connect it to this mega base. You can see we've got the honey farm that way. We've got the reverse nether portal this way. So in this direction, I can mark out the entire area of the room right here. Repair my pickaxe. And if I make it so that I only have stone blocks on my hotbar, and I then mine this block right here and break it, you will see that the entire room is now mined out. It's also going to be annoying to keep all these blocks here whilst I'm trying to build. So I'm, I'm going to let them despawn by dropping off all these items right here. And because those items are in spawn chunks, they'll still be loaded. Their despawn timer will still be going. And whilst I wait, I can once again repair my tools. All of the items have now gone. And on a side note, ladies and gentlemen, do, do you ever feel like you're being watched? Because I can do. I, I feel like he's been watching me for the entire video. Yes, I've teamed up with Blockheads to release this fella. Doesn't he look amazing? He's a permanent part of the setup. And if you also want to make him a permanent part of your setup, you can get him at blockheads.store. It's now on sale for just two more weeks. The timer is ticking, so do not miss your chance because once that timer is over, he is gone forever. And right now, I'm building the floor of the giant collection system. I'm trying to make it so the room looks really nice as well. Rather than just have redstone, you know, we can have some nice aesthetic blocks too. Such as every color of concrete for the floor. And more iron blocks and sea lanterns for all of the walls. Part of the system is also going to require a massive row of jack-o'-lanterns that goes all the way around the outside. And then I can start adding all of the chests and also all of the hoppers. Right here, I'm going to build all of the shulker box loaders, which involves note blocks, droppers, observers, and a load of other redstone components. All these redstones here to break the shulkers when needed. And we're also gonna need a big long row of dispensers to place the new shulker boxes. These chests are gonna be what I fill up with empty shulker boxes so that everything stays fully stocked. And then I can start building all of the redstone for the item filters. And each of these hoppers is going to need to have the different items in that I want to sort. So that's going to require a bit of a trip home to get those items. I'm going to need seven stacks of renamed blocks to act as the filters, and then all the different colors of concrete. Next, I can place the items into each and every one of these. And the reason I need six hoppers for each color is because so many items are produced from this farm, one hopper ju just wouldn't be able to take it all in. And technically, I could get away with just having five of the hoppers, but I'm, I'm doing six just to be safe, since I don't want any of the items to be wasted. Mission to fill in every single one has now been a Accomplished. And the items are going to be pushed along this ice highway, but I think I'm also going to make the entire roof of this room to also be made out of ice. This glass is going to hold all of the water in place. The honey blocks will align the items so that they are sliding on the ice, but also over the hoppers. And the walls will make sure the items don't get blocked and the water still cannot escape. Finally, any excess items will end up in this fire and the glass above will protect everything. All of these chests now need to be emptied, and what I can actually do is mine this up and send it into the system. And I also have to dig a tunnel right here, which will eventually connect up to this water. I just need a few more resources, such as ice, trapdoors, and glass. 
There we go. The transportation is complete. I'm going to fill the machine up with shulker boxes. And with that fully done, I can now set off the farm and get loads and loads of gravity blocks. I've been running this machine with various different types of blocks for quite some time. If I just head through here, you'll see that nothing is broken on this side. And if we head into the collection room, we have loads and loads and loads of shulker boxes of every single type of concrete. And just look at all the gravel that I've got. Didn't really run the sand one that much, but, but this is absolutely fantastic. I now do not have to worry about any of these, which really will make my life easier, especially when I'm doing massive builds in the future. And so with the gravity block factory now out of the way, I can begin building the carpet and rail dupers. Both of these machines are fairly similar, which is why I've grouped them together. And because I have an iron farm that gets me all the iron I could possibly need, and a gold farm that, that, that does the same thing, as well as a raid farm that gets me plenty of redstone, etc., etc., I'm not going to keep any of the rails that I get. Instead, I'm going to put them into lava. And the same goes for the carpets as well, because I already have a massive sheep farm that gets me all the wool that I could possibly need. Now, both of these little dupers are two of the most simple machines that you could ever make. And because they're so simple, I'm also going to grab quite a few resources to make it look nice as well. The rail duper is also going to be set up so it gets you one of every type of rail as well, because I think that'll make it feel even more complete. The carpet duper is also going to require a dead coral fan. We have one there. I've only just got enough inventory space to fit every single item. And when it comes to actually building this, I, I reckon we build it somewhere near the tree farm. You know, have a bit of a, a, a district of, uh, of duper kind of farms in this area. I reckon right here is a nice little spot for it. So let's start digging out the floor. And I'm going to begin with the rail duper, which involves placing redstone in these trenches that, that I've dug. And we're going to have torches along here and blocks on top. And we're basically going to repeat the same thing four times because... It's, it's going to be the same rail duper four times for each of the different variants. Next, I'll add redstone on top and pistons connected to each one that are all going to extend. In front of these, I'm going to add two slime. And then around this, I can start adding all the obsidian. There you go. Now you can see how it's boxed in and where every rail is going to be placed. There's going to be an observer. So we'll get these down and then on top of each one, let's do it. So we're going to have a, a, a normal rail there powered here and then detector and activator in those two spots as i said before i also want to destroy all the rails created which is why we are going to add lava so we're going to do one well one piece next to every single observer like that and then i can bring this glass up a bit higher so the rails can't go anywhere else except in the lava that's uh, that's the thinking behind it anyway now to add even more obsidian above the slimes i, I can't really add anything else unless it's an immovable block like obsidian or glazed terracotta would have worked. And finally, I'll add a black concrete roof to top off the build. Then I'll show you it in action. You'll see how simple it is. It's basically just a piston extending and, and going back. And that, that duplicates the rails. That is the build done. If I come down here, we can flick this lever. And as you can see, the rails keep popping off. But they stay there as well. And it's basically the observers are constantly activating the pistons, pushing inwards and outwards as they get updated. And this instant movement causes the rails to duplicate. It's a bit weird. I don't know why it happens like that, but it's, it, it, it's, it's cool as well. I love how they're just all burning in. It's very, very satisfying to watch. And you can see right now the torches are off so the pistons can retract, which is why those observers can keep moving. But if I flick this lever, the torches switch back on, the pistons are now all extended and they cannot retract, which is what stops the machine. So yeah, it's very cool. You could change this lava to instead be hoppers if you did want to pick up the rails. And I am now going to build a carpet duper next to it. It's going to be very similar, but there is going to be some differences as well. For example, this machine is quite wide because it's basically four rail dupers next to each other. Whereas this is just going to be one carpet duper that's quite tall. And one carpet duper can do four carpets. We're going to start with an observer here and a piston, a sticky one for that matter. Oh, right there. As you see, it extends. And then we need to get out our slime and place it here. In fact, we need to be on top of it because it needs to stack up all the way up to this level, five high. Then we can use this dead coral horn fan. And this is what is going to do the duping. Kind of works similar to how a lot of TNT dupers work. Not how the ones I built up there work, but how a lot of them do. And then we need to add carpets that go all the way up like so. And this is effectively it for the machine. I can show you a quick iteration of it. Look at that. Look at it go. Whoa, look at the carpets go flinging everywhere. Anyway, we, we don't really want all of these. It's one thing making a sand and gravel factory, but I don't know. Carpets and rails, yeah, I don't, I don't need it.
All right, guys, look, I was throwing them away. Don't you worry, I'll even get a bucket of lava and burn them. Yep, there is there is absolutely nothing to see here. And speaking of burning, I can actually add the trench here. It's very annoying that it's snowing. I, I was going to add string to this so it doesn't ruin the build. But let's just get this all down first. So we're going to have lava there. And then we're going to have glass all the way around so we can see what is going on inside it. And as you'd expect on the sides, we're going to have obsidian again because they are next to slime blocks and, and we can't have a block that uh, the slime can push. That's the machine done. And I'll add a bit more black concrete up here just to fully top it off. And then in these gaps that I've left around the edge, I'm going to add white concrete. Just as an extra thing, you can't really see it because of the snow. But, but don't worry, once I've added all the stuff, in fact, we don't, want to, we don't want it under there. We just want it like this. And yeah, I've got the choice to either add a glass platform at build height so that no snow can come down or cover it in string. I can't be able to build up 300 blocks or whatever it's going to be, 200. So instead, I'm going to just quickly mine up this, head downstairs and grab plenty of string. Then I can cover the whole thing up. I think the lava is stopping any snow from being able to form here but it can form on the white concrete and also on these bits here. And there you have it. Everything's done. I can also sleep to get rid of this snow. And after sleeping, I'll wake up next to my blockade in Minecraft. And I also have that guy still watching me in real life too. I feel like I'm surrounded by them. Anyway, you can now see when we flick this lever right here, look at it go. It is making all of the carpets for me and burning them at the same time. It's just very, very satisfying to watch, isn't it? Isn't it very cool? And once again, you can put hoppers at the bottom if you want to actually collect them and everything. And, and I can have this one running as well, my rail dupers. Look at that. Rail dupers, carpet dupers, just destroying items for absolutely no reason. But hey, in my opinion, it looks cool. And sometimes if something looks cool, it's, it's worth doing. But you know what? The next duper we're going to make, the final duper, is way cooler than these. It's a little bit more complex, but it is worth it because it allows you to get much much better stuff. I personally won't be keeping the items that I get from this because I, I just feel like it is a little bit too cheaty. But if you decide to use any dupers in your world, that is always your choice. Like everyone's entitled to choose what to do in their world. And that's what makes Minecraft so great. I've now chosen that I'm going to allow myself to make a factory that gets me loads of gravity blocks. I've chosen that I'm allowing myself to use TNT dupers. Like originally in my world, I didn't allow either of those. And maybe one day I'll allow myself to use rail and carpet dupers. Who knows? They might be patched by then. But most importantly, I need to focus on this next duper that is going to allow me to get infinite netherite. It doesn't require a crazy amount of items, but what it does include is a way to blow up netherite, which as you can see, should be impossible. You can't, you can't blow up netherite with TNT. Well, in theory you can't, but we're going to use a very clever trick that is going to make it possible. Every needed item is either in here or in my inventory. Although I do also actually need to grab four netherite blocks just temporarily so that I can actually use the machine. And incidentally, the place where we're going to build this is actually where my god particle farm is. And also where my rare block collection's at, which is, is pretty cool, isn't it? Now, I do plan to build this out there, but it's raining and I am on a quest to become the player with the most XP levels out of anybody. And granted, I do have a long way to go, but the only way to get there is to keep gathering XP. So if I go ahead and hold right click, hold left click, keep mining this, Yes, this is my god particle farm. And as you can see, it gets me a lot of XP very, very fast. In fact, it gets me XP faster than the player can process it. I, I don't know why. I don't know if it's a bit of lag that's caused that. But I'm kind of curious to know if I change this to instead just be a haste one beacon. Does it go at a better speed so the player can process all of the XP? Well, we're about to find out. We'll just use it a little bit. Have we got a build up? Okay, we, we've got a build up again. Not as much, but still a build up. If we just disable the beacon completely and use it with no haste, it seems to also cause a build up. Well, I always say the bigger the build up, the better. Like it's not causing me any lag. So I might as well just carry on with haste too, as I have been before. And then I'm going to spend a load of time getting as much XP as possible. And that is 12,000 levels. Fantastic. I'll, I'll just mine that up, play that. And then the rest of these can be returned to that chest. I'm going to get the totem back out. And yeah, 12,001. I'm happy with that. So now I can focus on doing this build. I'm going to start this with a blue ice highway that has borders of glass. And this is what is going to transport the netherite blocks. And there's a slight side point, which I thought was cool. This machine will actually get 288,000 netherite ingots per hour, which is kind of crazy. It's just a shame that I'll be putting all of them into a cactus. The cactus will be right here. And as you can see, the water will flow to it nicely. I can chuck an item into that collection water. Look how it goes all the way around. It goes up there, around, 
and into the cactus. And with the collection system out of the way, I'm going to focus on getting the update suppressors onto these four quartz blocks. This is quite easy to do, and I've shown it quite a lot in other videos. And it basically involves tricking the game into thinking there's still a lectern here when there's actually a shulker box. It causes a weird error, so if we just open that up, break this, and then instead put an empty shulker box, need to make sure it's empty, put that in its place. We can't open it because the game thinks it's a lectern, but this is now an update suppressor. An update suppressor that I need to move one block in this direction because it's in the wrong place. There we go. And now I can create the update suppressor shulkers that are going to be crucial for this duper. There we go. That is mission accomplished. They're all in place. And if I place a block here, you can see it just stays as 60 inventory. I can place another one. It's 59. It stays. But if I instead also add comparators to this side as well, now when I place a block and I click on it, it goes back to 59. I can do that again, it goes back to 59. So this is now an active duplicator. But we don't want to dupe anything boring. No, we want to be using it to dupe the netherite. And we also need a machine that can destroy netherite with TNT, which is, you know, a, a little bit of a complicated thing. So I have to make sure that that is factored into the design. But first, I need to create a system with pistons that will push the netherite in this direction. So just to explain what's going to be going on, these pistons are going to constantly extend blocks upwards and then these pistons will push them that way to where TNT will be dropped. But the pistons have to extend at a specific moment so that the TNT can break the netherite blocks. So this is going to be connected up with a bunch of repeaters. And I'm also going to need another piece of sand. I'll, I'll explain why. If I just have this redstone connect to those pistons, they will extend for quite a few ticks. But if instead I place sand, then the sand will make it so that this is only activated for a split second, for just for one tick. And the shorter the amount of time these pistons are extended, the more blocks I can be placed and pushed upward. You, you'll, you'll soon see how it all works. But trust me, this bit of sand is very important. Now, we need to make the little TNT blast chamber. It starts with a little obsidian platform there, which I, I don't know if it's super necessary, but then it gets built up higher with an obsidian wall. And the TNT is going to be dispensed right here and pushed along by water. So if I have an open fence gate, that's going to stop the water from flowing down, but the TNT can pass through. We're also going to waterlog this with a slab. The TNT will go here and slowly, because of the soul sand, will get moved across. This clock will make it so that there's regular TNT being dispensed. And the way you break netherite blocks is by pushing them with a piston as they get blown up. Allow me to demonstrate. If you place 10 repeaters down, all on full ticks delay, followed by one at the end on a single tick, and dispense TNT on the tick before that, if the piston pushes the TNT just as it blows up, it blows up the netherite because in the single tick that a block is being pushed, its blast resistance gets set to zero. So that's what I've utilized here. There are 10 repeaters all in a row connected to those pistons, followed by the 11th repeater on just a single tick. I'm going to add a bit of a wall to this as well because you can, you can just see too much at the moment, can't you? Let's do it. Yeah, I'm, I'm liking how that's looking. Let's also grab all of the TNT, which can go into this dispenser. Yeah, I, I could use a TNT duper, but for this this particular time, you know, I'm, I'm not going to use one. It's, it, it's fine with a dispenser. And I can show you this in action. So I flick this, those keep extending, and notice what happens here. As that blows up, those pistons extend. Can you see? And it's, it does it really, really fast. Okay, that's only for a, a, a split second is the, are those extending, thanks to that piston and sand. And if I start placing netherite blocks, as you can see, because of the update suppression, it is duping them, and they are going to get blown up. Okay, let's, let, let me make it so you can see this a little bit better. So placing the netherite next to the update suppressors causes it to duplicate. These pistons then push the blocks across, and the TNT explodes just as the blocks are moved, so that the items drop downwards, get collected up, and destroyed by the cactus. And as you can see, the TNT is separated by the water and the soul sand, which make it move very, very slowly, so that it explodes just as it hits the obsidian. And the piston with the sand is causing the redstone to only be activated for a single tick. It's not really much of a view for the player, though, is this? All I can really see is the netherite over there going onto the cactus, which, if you ask me, is pretty cool. I'm going to start putting red concrete through. You can see it works with any block. Uh, the reason I'm doing red concrete is because I don't want them to be loads of netherite all the way up there. So this will just ensure that there's no netherite left. Although there is four blocks up here that are acting as kind of blockers. They need to go. As you can see, they, they do drop the items as I mine them, but I'm, I'm not going to pick them up. Instead, I can just place down any other block because they're at the piston's push limit. So the, the red concrete will do. I found this to be quite a fun video. I wanted to make sure that I didn't benefit from any dupers that I didn't want to. I mean, for me, the sand duper and TNT duper, as I've said earlier, is kind of okay. But I'm certainly not going to use general item dupers in my world like, 
like the one to get loads of netherite. Now, that for me is just a step too far and kind of takes away from Minecraft a little bit. But I still thought it was cool to showcase and then just destroy the items. I'll also repair my netherite beacon. And remember, if you'd like access to the cool contraptions I've made like that netherite duper or anything else in the world, my Patreon is linked in the description and you can download the world there. And if you want to see how I managed to infinitely farm bedrock and get all of these items, click the video that is on screen right now. Or if you'd like to know how I built this XP farm that gets me 89 million XP per hour and has got me to level 12,000, click the other video, which is on your screen right now.